Hey guys, it's Bailey and welcome back to the channel. This is going to be a what's new at the drugstore haul. A lot of you may have noticed you walk into your local drugstore and in the kind of what's new section, there's a lot going on there. There have been a lot of new releases and slowly but surely I've been picking up pieces here, pieces there, and I've amassed this pile that I just can't get through with sort of one-off reviews. So I thought, everyone loves a good haul, let's round it all up and just share my thoughts on it. I've had a chance to try all these items, so as usual, it's not only going to be a haul, but it's also going to be relatively thorough but quick reviews of all the individual products. So if you want to see um, reviews, hear my thoughts, see what's new at the drugstore with some before and after kind of demo-y type things, please continue watching. First thing I want to talk about are some new eyeshadow sticks. These are from L'Oreal and they are the infallible eye crayons. I have four shades to show you here today. One is Impressive Brown, which is a shimmery taupe brown. I'm wearing it on my eyes today. The other is Everlasting Gold. I'm not wearing this today, but I do have a look that will be coming up shortly. There's Enduring Rose, which I am wearing in my inner corner, but you're probably not going to be able to see it so much right now because I'm wearing something else that I'm going to talk about later on top of it. And then Resilient Green, which is such a pigmented emerald green. Now these are not the first eyeshadow sticks to hit the drugstore. Jordana has some, Rimmel has some. Both do them really, really well and Jordana in particular makes them really inexpensive. These were two, maybe three times more than Jordana's, but if you can still get an affordable eyeshadow pencil from the drugstore and avoid having to pay much, much more than that for a luxury brand, it's still worth it in my eyes. So I really wanted to give these a go, and I have to say, I am so impressed with the lasting power and the wear time with these. It can be a little dodgy with shadow pencils, especially those from the drugstore. You'll apply them, maybe you'll need to set them or really prime well underneath. But a really good eyeshadow pencil, in my opinion, acts as both primer and cream shadow all in one. You don't have to apply a primer underneath if you don't want to, and you don't have to set it with shadow if you don't want to. And that is exactly what these did for me on my eyes. Over the course of, I think, a 12, 13, 14 hour day, it was a long day when I was testing these out, they wore flawlessly, crease-free, fade-free throughout the day, full-on pigmentation. When I looked in the mirror at the end of the day, I was super impressed with these. So in my opinion, they are worth the price tag, and the shade selection is slightly different than those that you might find within the Jordana range or the Rimmel range. Rimmel, I believe, has like a nice big, uh, bold teal, a purple, things like that. Of course, they all have their essential neutrals, so shades like Enduring Rose and this Everlasting Gold might be universal across each of the lines, but when you get to the bolder shades like the brown, the emerald, things like that, that's when you're going to start to see differentiation among different brands. And so if you see a shade in, in Rimmel's line that you like and it's different from those you see in Jordana's or Rimmel's, I say snatch it up because these are fantastic. Moving on to another brow product and another L'Oreal product at that. This is the second one of these I've seen in the drugstore or at least um, that has come out recently. It is L'Oreal's new Brow Stylist Plumper. It's a brow gel mascara and unlike, I believe it's Maybelline's, I have a review of it that I will um, maybe annotate here that you can click over and see what I thought of it. Bottom line is the product itself was great. The wand was super dinky. I don't know why they put the wand they did with that brow gel because it was just super impractical to me. So this has a stellar wand. It's very similar to that Benefit uh, brow. I, for I forget what the name of that is, but it has a very tiny wand. It's great for really filling in precisely. That's the kind of wand this has, which is fantastic. But there are only two shades. I ended up getting the lighter shade, which I do think suits my brows relatively well. This is light to medium, which I think would suit blondes really well. Medium brunettes, kind of like me, sort of. And the al other alternative was like deep brown, and it was like very dark brown and deeper. So there isn't a whole lot of versatility in the shade range, but as far as the product goes, it's, it works really, really nicely. Like you would hope a, a tinted brow gel would. It deposits a nice amount of pigment. Like I said, the brush allows you to deposit it really evenly, so you don't have to worry about getting it in the baby fine hairs that may surround your brows. You don't necessarily want to tint additionally. You know, it keeps them nice and neat looking, and it lasts all day without running, smudging. It doesn't drip down into your eyes. It's been super rainy here lately and I haven't noticed this budging at all. So the wear is great and it's a great drugstore brow gel. Just you got to make sure you get a shade that matches. Next moving on to two new things from Milani. One is their foiled eyeshadows. These are actually called Milani Fierce Foil Eye Shine, which is interesting to see given that there have been a few foil products that have been coming out lately. Namely, I just reviewed Makeup Geek's new foil shadows, so saw these, really wanted to see if they were a drugstore alternative. I ended up getting two different quads. 
One is in Rome, which is lots of beautiful shimmery purples. The other is Florence, which contains neutrals, but there are two neutral palettes. This is just the one I picked because one, the shades looked a little bit more diverse. The other looked like they look very similar when worn, and these contains, contain a few more warmer sort of coppery golden shades. So I picked those up and was super interested to find that they aren't actually a powder texture. Given that I had just used Makeup Geek's new foil shadows, I totally anticipated these being of a powder consistency, and they are not at all. They're really more like a gel, kind of, a flaky gel. They're actually probably most similar to Stila's Magnificent Metal eyeshadows. I can link to that below as well so you have a better idea of the texture there, but those need to be foiled. These don't. They're they're like a hybrid between those where they have this their own gel medium. So you can apply them direct to the, directly to the eye and they come with a doe foot applicator. But once again, I was shocked because this doe foot applicator is rubber. It's this interesting rubber spatula that you absolutely need to pick up this kind of product, but it's surprisingly efficient at laying it down. So I was happy to see that. Overall, these are definitely not standalone eyeshadows. You absolutely have to prime underneath them or they will crease almost immediately. But when you wear them over the right powder, the right primer, etc., they do function really well. I found them a little hard to blend into each other because some shades are chunkier than others, whereas the, some, some of these will apply smoothly and opaquely or you can build them to full opacity. Others are like those Stila Magnificent Metal Foil shadows. If you were to apply them dry, they're just very chunky. They're more like a glitter overspray. And so I'm not sure everyone's gonna be super happy and satisfied with how these play with each other. If you're looking for ultra foiled metallic eyes, these are kind of hit or miss depending on which quad you get, which shadows you pull. And the other thing is that as I'm using these shades, I'm finding there's not a whole lot of product inside here. If you use this rubber spatula, which by the way, I. I would use this even over any brushes I have in my collection. You really do need something that's kind of plasticky or rubberized to pick this product up. So it's kind of this or nothing. Your finger, I suppose, is what you could use, but that, you know, you lack precision when you apply that to your inner corner, outer corner, things like that, which this really allows you to do. But I found that as I was using this to kind of scoop product up, work with it, and blend it in, it, it goes pretty fast. I've only used this maybe two or three times and found a lot of my product is already gone. So definitely pros and cons with this. It's absolutely worth checking out if you really wanna hop on the metals trend. You just have to be aware that you might need to wear it or you definitely need to wear it over a primer and maybe even a pigmented, like a colored primer at that because the some of these are just so sparse that you're gonna you're not gonna like the look of it when it's just over your bare skin. You're probably gonna want it over something a little more pigmented, perhaps like one of those L'Oreal shadow sticks, which is actually what I'm wearing today. I am wearing this rose gold color here in this quad in my inner corner over the kind of champagne-y uh, L'Oreal shadow stick. So overall, I'm meh on these. These are really accessible if you have a CVS nearby. However, if you want something that's a true powder consistency and yet you still want the metallic foil finish, I recommend checking out Makeup Geeks. They are fantastic. Some more metallic or foiled fierceness from Milani. This is actually called Fierce Foil Eyeliner. And I got the shade Black Gold Foil because it just seemed like it was gonna be the most versatile. I think they had this one, a brown, a purple, and maybe even a fourth shade. Can't really remember. Really happy I picked this shade up though. It's very unique because it is black. It has the black base, but even once you dig down underneath what looks like a shimmery gold overspray on top, you still get that kind of duochrome. It's like an antique black shade almost, which is absolutely beautiful and I was I'm happy to say that it stayed on my upper lash line as I was wearing it didn't smudge or fade throughout the day which I was kind of anticipating giving given that their most recent liner launches which was the galaxy liners I believe not a lot of people had great things to say about those and so I was a little hesitant to pick these up thinking oh they're not gonna work they're gonna smudge they're gonna fade etc not the case I'm happy to report that this lasted really beautifully all day. Would absolutely recommend it. And it even comes with like a little liner brush or a little, it's not an angled liner. It's just like a narrow tipped brush, which I have always used to apply this since I got it. Works really nicely. So it's like a two for one kind of thing. So really like this. In fact, of the two, of these two things from Milani, which I found side by side the display, I would recommend the gel liner over the foiled shadows. And last, we are nearing the end here, our lips. I have two different kinds of lip products. The first I want to touch on are matte lip shades. More mattes from the drugstore, which I am always excited about because mattes that don't dry your lips out, that wear nice and evenly, and that flatter 
most kinds of lips. What I mean by that is anywhere from dry to thoroughly moisturized, so hard to find. These are from L'Oreal. They are their new infallible pro matte glosses. I was wearing this in a video a few videos back and then again in the most recent tutorial. So for those of you who are asking, that's what it was. And it was actually in the shade Blushing Ambition. The other shade I have here is Aphrodite Kiss, which is this bright berry sort of shade. I'm really impressed with these as well. These glide on, they have the normal L'Oreal kind of um, tapered doe foot applicator. So it's really easy to get a nice precise application. The consistency of the product reminds me of the NYX mousse lip products and I forget what those are called but I'll annotate it here hopefully to really get my point across the the consistency is almost exactly like those I find these are a little bit creamier they feel a little wetter if that makes any sense at all but they still do dry down to a matte consistency now it doesn't completely harden all the way down which I feel like contributes to the fact that it doesn't dry your lips out as much you are gonna see a little bit of transfer with these but when you look in the mirror a few hours later most of the color itself will still be there so it retains a lot of its pigmentation you just happen to apply a lot of excess color that then comes off on your glasses you know stuff like that as you live your life throughout the day but the pigmentation itself stays really nicely I'd say upwards of four hours so overall a wonderful matte win from the drugstore if you see these I recommend you picking them up because matte in general is a great texture for winter so good time to pick these up and last on the exact opposite end of the spectrum as those matte lip products are ultra shimmery iridescent glosses these are from covergirl and these are lip lavas and they weren't cheap I I don't know if these are gonna be permanent additions to the collection or if these are limited edition but I think these were 10 bucks a piece which is getting kind of standard from some brands I know Maybelline had I think is getting up there with the glosses but I was a little shocked to see that kind of price tag for these so definitely look for them while they are on sale but I got the shades here colorlicious which I'm currently wearing on my lips right now lava glow which is this gorgeous um it looks like kind of an antique gold champagne -y in here but when you apply it on the lips it really comes off as more of a clear gloss with the champagne gold shimmer and then you can kind of build it to get that gold opacity but for the most part it is a super sheer goldy tinged gloss and then this gorgeous like galactic purple shade and it is called lavender La no lavender play on the word lava naturally and actually I misspoke the shade on my lips is not colorlicious that's the the line or the collection of lip products this is the shade look it's lava just just set the record straight despite having the intense shimmer and iridescence in these glosses there isn't any grittiness when you apply it to your lips which is my number one concern in fact this the one that I'm wearing on my lips right now looks like this fuchsia duochrome and like it's gonna have a lot of shimmer but I apply it to my lips and it's really more opaque it's like an op opaque metallic finish and so these can be a little deceptive when you see them in the tube versus when you actually apply them likewise the, the opacity isn't consistent amongst all the shades because like I said these two are pretty opaque and yet the uh, lava glow not so much this if you pick up one shade from this entire collection because there are some pretty wild shades in this collection I would recommend lava glow just because it is you can build it to get that kind of fun gold semi opaque gold sheen but if you don't it's it's almost like a duochrome clear and gold gloss where you can put it over a lip gloss and it just makes your lips look a little bit fuller, adds a little bit more interest than a clear lip gloss would because you have that gold tinge to it. Um, in terms of wear time, you know, these, these are glosses so they're not gonna be super long wearing, but if you get some of the more pigmented shades those do tend to last a little bit longer so I would give these like a two hour maximum but they do have these brush tips so they are relatively easy to apply the only problem with the and they are short so they're not super cumbersome when it comes to applying these typically I don't really like these brushes um, because they can get a little messy when you go to apply but these are short enough to where you get that precision however and you can even see it happening to this um, I'm not sure if you can see it all the way from here but it's already starting to fray which I absolutely hate about brushes you put them back in the tube and the bristles get all like splayed out so that when you take them out you end up with this little poof ball on the end of your um, applicator and it just makes it super hard to apply all these so I would have preferred to see a doe foot maybe an angled doe foot like you actually get in these L'Oreal glosses or matte lip products but that's not the case 
So if you don't mind the applicator with these, I recommend them, like I said, specifically this beautiful gold. But if not, the other shades are great too, and you shouldn't be fooled by the shimmer because they do actually come off pretty opaque. So after that long-winded haul slash reviews, I am done with this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I would love to hear what you have been hauling from the drugstore, if you've picked any of these products up. If you spotted even more that I haven't even heard of, seen, and need to check out, please let me know in the comments below. Thanks again for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.